All right. Good morning, folks. How's it going? This is Mike coming back at you with another uh, live commentary uh, on a uh, math video. Uh, as you know, uh, there are some audio issues with some of our uh, videos. So now I'm giving you uh, some live commentary uh, on those videos. I'm going to go through those videos, what the heck I was saying at the time. In the previous video, we talked about quadratic equations. How do we solve these things? Uh, what are the three techniques? Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about where do we use uh, these quadratic equations. There is indeed uh, some real life applications uh, for these guys. Uh, and the big one that I want to talk about in this video uh, is modeling projectile motion. Uh, picture a cannon being fired, uh, 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 sorry, picture a cannonball being fired out of a cannon, or you're launching a uh, rocket up. Uh, into the air. There's a horizontal and a vertical uh, component to the uh, motion. Well, the vertical position of the object in projectile motion at any time t uh, can be given by the following model here. S equals negative one half g t squared plus v naught t times s naught. Where g, if we're talking feet per second uh, squared, it's 32. If we're talking meters per second squared, then it's 9.8. Uh, v naught is the initial velocity of the object. Uh, so that's how fast is this thing going uh, right when we fire it or right when we launch it. Um, and then S naught uh, is the initial position of the object. Uh, we don't necessarily have to be starting at the ground. Uh, we could be starting some number of feet above the uh, ground when we launch it uh, or when we fire it. So that starting height, how far we are off the ground, that's S naught. Uh, and then S is uh, the position at any time uh, T. Uh, yes, uh, G is the uh, gravitational constant. Um, yep, uh, just based on whether you measure it in feet per second squared uh, or mirrors per second squared, uh, you do get a, a slightly uh, different object or a, a slightly d different value here. So here's our first problem. An object is launched into projectile motion. The vertical position of the object at any time t is given by s equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 23 t plus 7. At what time will the object hit the ground? And we want to uh, round our answer uh, to the nearest tenth of a second. Now, just looking at this model, uh, just before we go on with solving the actual problem, uh, we can notice uh, that the number in front of t squared is negative 4.9. Uh, and just with that, you can figure out what we're using here, either meters or feet. Uh, we're using meters because if you substitute in 9.8 for G and then you multiply it by that negative one half, then you will get the negative 4.9. So we know that it's in meters per second. Uh, we can look at the number in front of our T value and see that that's our um, initial velocity. So 23 meters per second. Uh, and then we can look at the constant that we add on that plus seven. Uh, and we see that uh, that is our uh, starting height. That's how far we are above the uh, ground there. So that's just uh, picking up uh, some small pieces uh, of information just by looking at our model. We know that it's in meters per second squared uh, for the first uh, number there, and uh, velocity is in meters per second, uh, and initial position is meters. So this is a very ugly looking quadratic. Um, again, we had our three uh, methods that we can use to solve quadratic equations, factoring, completing the square, uh, or the quadratic formula. If you have projectile motion problems, uh, no matter whether you're using meters per second or whatever, uh, or you're using feet per second, um, because the number in front of t squared is always going to be something that's not one. Um, I would not recommend completing the square. I uh, would not uh, recommend uh, trying to factor this thing. I would just go ahead 
and use the uh, quadratic formula uh, to uh, try to solve this guy. Yes, it's not gonna be pretty, but nonetheless, we know that it will get us down to uh, a correct answer. So that's what we did here. Uh, we took minus b, negative 23, plus or minus the square root of 23 squared, minus four times negative 4.9 times seven, and that's all divided by two uh, times negative 4.9. Note that's what. Uh, note that what's underneath our square root, uh, our um, discriminant is going to be positive. Uh, and when you do that calculation in there, you get six hundred sixty-six point two. Uh, oh boy, not good number. <laughs> so we have negative twenty-three plus or minus the square root of six hundred sixty-six point two uh, equals negative nine point eight. Or sorry, over. Uh, negative 9.8 not equals uh, nine point, uh, negative 9.8. Uh, so again, uh, with that plus or minus there, we actually have two calculations that we are doing. We're doing negative 23 plus the square root of 666.2 all over negative 9.8. That's one calculation. And then the other calculation is negative 23 minus the square root of 666.2 all over negative 9.8. So we are going to come up with uh, two separate t values here. And when you do those calculations, rounded to the nearest tenth of a second, we get negative 0.3 seconds uh, and five seconds. Now obviously only one of these answers uh, makes sense. We can't have time being negative. Uh, we can't go back in time, uh, trust me, if I could, I would have, um, and fixed some stuff. Uh, but um, so our answer of negative 0.3 seconds, we have to cross that out. We can't have that guy. Uh, that's not a realistic answer. So therefore, uh, our one answer of when approximately uh, this object is going to hit the ground is going to be uh, our answer of five seconds. But um, just once more, uh, the only way that this formula goes off is if you use the incorrect values for A, B, and C. Um, again, you have to take the number as well as the sign in front of each of those things, uh, and those are your A, B, and C values. Uh, so here's another question, a little bit more involved this time. Uh, an object is thrown at 15 feet above the ground with an initial upward velocity of 20 feet per second. Uh, write the model that describes the position of the object at any time t. At what time or times uh, will the object be 20 feet above the ground? Round each answer, or your single answer, whatever it may be, to the nearest tenth of a second. So in this case, we have to build the model given the information uh, in the problem. We're not handed the model to us. We need to build it. Uh, we're told that it's thrown at 15 feet above the ground. So 15 feet is where we start at. That's our starting height. Uh, so that's going to be our S naught. And we're told that it's thrown with an initial upward velocity of 20 feet per second. Well, uh, upward initial um, velocity is v naught. So v naught is going to be 20. Now, lastly, we know that everything is in terms of feet. So when it comes to our g value, uh, you may wonder, do we use 32 or do we use 9.8? Well, since everything is in terms of feet, uh, we want to use 32 uh, feet per second squared. So we're gonna have negative one half times 32 or negative 16 t squared plus the 20 t plus the 15. So that's how we uh, compiled our model uh, using the information that was given to us uh, in the problem. So here's our model that we're going to work with 
uh, for the remainder of this question. Just uh, once more, guys, um, I know I've said this probably a thousand times and you're probably sick to death of hearing it. Uh, if you guys have questions, you know, reach out to me, send me emails, leave voicemails on my phone, whatever you have to do, uh, I will help you out. So now we're going to actually answer the second part of our question. We want to know at what times will the object be 20 feet above the uh, ground? This function here, S, gives us the height at any time t, so we wanna know when that height will equal 20. So I'm gonna take my model here, negative 16t squared plus 20t plus 15, and I'm gonna set it equal to a positive 20. And then I'm going to solve for t. Well, first let's get this thing, let's get a quadratic looking thing equal to zero. Uh, so to do that, uh, let's subtract 20 from both sides. And if we do that, we are going to come up with, as we'll see very shortly, negative uh, 16t squared plus 20t minus five. And that's going to equal zero because we just subtracted uh, 20 from both sides. There we go, there's our model, our new model that we're going to be uh, working with, our new uh, quadratic equation. And again, we're gonna use the uh, quadratic formula here to figure out what t is. We're not gonna try to factor it, we're not gonna try to uh, complete the square, it's gonna be way too time consuming. Uh, so, Taking your pieces, substituting into the quadratic formula, uh, it's gonna be negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 20 squared or 400 minus four times negative 16 times negative five. All over two times a negative 16 or negative 32. Uh, negative four times negative 16 is 64. Uh, 64 times a negative five is negative 320. 20 squared is 400. 400 minus 320 gives you 80, and that's underneath your square root. So we have negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 80 all over uh, negative 32. Again, we have the two calculations that we have to do, uh, negative 20 plus square root of 80 all over minus 32, uh, as well as negative 20 minus the square root of 80 all over a negative 32. And when you do those calculations, uh, you get 0.3 seconds uh, and 0.9 seconds. So this thing goes up and then comes down very, very, very quickly. Uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, speed going on uh, with this object that was uh, launched here. Uh, you could almost think of this as kind of like a whiffed launch. Uh, launch didn't quite go uh, as they had hoped here. But guys, this is how we use uh, the uh, quadratic equations in a real life sense. We use it in modeling uh, projectile uh, motion. That uh, quadratic formula we see very, very handy when it comes to uh, solving problems uh, like these. Um, yes, it's not the prettiest formula, but nonetheless, we still can use it and it does work. So this concludes our video on applications uh, of quadratic equations. Guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, take it easy.